The Millennium Development Goals, or MDGs, expire in 2015, just in four years' time. In the last few years, the world undertook an extensive review of progress in MDGs. In the context of multiple high-level events, such as the UN MDG Summit in September 2010, governmental leaders, development experts and other stakeholders examined trends in global and regional progress. Since year 2000, there has been clear progress in all of the MDG targets at a global level, although Africa and South Asia have made the slowest progress on most targets. Within countries, aggregate improvements have in some cases masked growing inequalities, with particular groups such as ethnic minorities and those living in very remote areas often the most excluded from progress. At the same time, MDGs have been criticized for the lack of participation which was involved in the formulation of MDGs, lack of specific commitments for rich countries and for neglecting key areas of importance for development like good governance, human rights and so on. It is obvious that business as usual will not work anymore. We must build upon the progress made in improving gender equality, education and environmental sustainability and accelerate achievements in child and maternal mortality along with better access to sanitation. The effects of global crisis, be them financial, economic, energy or food, as well as climate change and natural disasters, further complicate the challenges of making progress towards MDG goals. The impact is undoubtedly negative because of the severity of the recession and the tendency for indicators of human development to decline much more in bad times than they improve in good times. A key lesson, however, from this financial crisis is that the economic and social impact of the downturn would have been far worse if not for the effective and often extraordinary policy responses which were adopted by many advanced, emerging and even developing countries, as well as the swift and sizable assistance provided by the international financial institutions and multilateral development banks. Policy responses and international cooperation have been better than in previous crises. It is hard to judge the impact of the MDGs without a counterfactual examples to draw on. But there are reasons to believe that they have had the effect on mobilizing aid funds and of directing aid towards particular sectors such as primary education. They have also been used as an advocacy tool in both global and national contexts. At a time of uncertainty, we need to extend our limited resources further. The actions we take today will shape future opportunities and challenges that international communities had committed to redoubt efforts towards achieving the highly ambitious MDGs targets by its deadline in 2015. Otherwise, many countries risk missing the deadline unless they take immediate action. One of the mechanisms for acceleration of the progress in MDGs by 2015 is called MAF, MDGs Accelerated Framework. It provides national stakeholders with a systematic approach to identify off-track MDGs, means those for which one or more targets are likely to be missed at the current rate of progress, and which countries want to address. Then it analyzes bottlenecks that are causing MDGs to stay off track or to advance too slowly. And after that, it aims to generate shared diagnostics and to recommend comprehensive, collaborative and focused actions based on prioritized acceleration solutions. But what will replace the MDGs after their expiry date in 2015? As you know, MDGs are not the only global agreement. There are very different models in existence which together illustrate the range of possible types of agreements which could be negotiated at the part of the post-2015 development strategy. 
Today, in the year 2012, we are a long way from right global agreement. But the building blocks are there. The experience of the MDGs has shown that such things are possible and that the progress can be made. The global political environment is changing, of course, but new dynamics and changing circumstances can provide opportunities for actions as well as barriers to progress. While research is starting now, the political progress may not get going until 2013. Until then, the development of thinking and options should be based on what has been learned from the MDGs, analysis of the current programs that an agreement would be aiming to solve, experience from other global agreements, and a realistic assessment of likely political interests and processes. Recent months have seen increasing interest in the idea that Rio Plus 20 Summit could be the launch pad for a new set of Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. Only four months away from the summit, the Rio Plus 20 agenda, which is focused on the two areas of green economy and institutional framework for sustainable development, looks pretty thin with little consensuses on what the summit could or should achieve. Against this backdrop, many governments and advocacy groups are likely to regard SDGs as a relatively achievable and tangible win. But what would SDGs cover? What would a progress to define and then implement them look like? And what would some of these key political challenges be? There is a little clarity on that, what SDGs should cover. One option would be for SDGs to address key sustainability gaps in the MDGs between now and 2015. The MDGs handling of sustainable development has often been criticized with everything bundled into MDG 7, which was simply to ensure environmental sustainability. One suggestion for SDGs then is that they could add specifically to the MDGs by defining new goals or sub-goals on concrete areas missed out in the MDGs. For example, access to energy. Such goals would run over the same time scale as the MDGs by 2015 and then be folded into the discussions on what happens after that date with no assumptions built in about SDGs beyond 2015. Alternative, alternatively, SDGs could become the successor framework to MDGs. Some commentators have wondered whether SDGs might become umbrella concept for post-2015 goals, encompassing and replacing the MDGs after that date. The UN Secretary General has backed this approach, saying in his opening to the General Assembly in 2011, quote, let us develop a new generation of sustainable development goals to pick up where the MDGs leave off." Unquote. Where the MDGs were focused solely on developing countries, discussion to date about SDGs strongly tend towards the idea that they would be universal, applicable to developing and developed countries alike. However, this still leaves a major question mark over whether SDGs would apply only to global issues, leaving them open to the change of being largely rhetorical, or specifically to the policies of all 192 nations of the members of the United Nations, which would significantly raise the political stakes. In conclusion, a few simple principles upon which the post-2015 development framework should be universal in their coverage engage all actors, stay simple and concise, be relevant to new geopolitical, economical and political contexts, contain measurable targets, include the needs of people with disabilities, reshape links between goals, targets and indicators. Last but not the least, the new global framework should address the root causes of poverty and injustice in all countries, from the richest to the poorest. It should address inequity and inequality, 
as well as environmental sustainability and climate change. It should look upon the responsibility of national governments to sustainably manage their natural and financial resources, to the responsibility of the international community to support developing countries in the face of global challenges, to respecting their official development agenda commitments, as well as through innovative redistributive funds mechanisms which would generate additional predictive finance. And last but not the least, to ensure the responsibility of developing countries themselves and their governments to deliver on development commitments. This was a short journey that we now had from MDGs to the agenda beyond after 2015. I hope you like it and I invite you all to our lectures in Budapest to hear more and debate on it, what your role could be as the member of civil society, practitioner or an academician in this contemporary world. Thank you.